everyone. I'm Melissa McAllister, and you're listening to The Melissa Made Show. Now, for decades, I've dedicated myself to helping women break the cycle of dieting, navigate through all the fads, and change their lives through my nutrition coaching. Now, each week, I'm going to talk about everything from deep nutrition, mindset, self-care, the ideal workout routine, tips on how and why to implement intermittent fasting in your life, my favorite recipes that are not only crowd pleasers, but they're actually healthy for you, and so much more. Now, with small and consistent changes, you can defy aging while living a happier, healthier, and more heart-filled life. I'm so excited to show you it's possible with the right strategies that are so simple to adopt. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Melissa Made Show. And today I want to talk to you about what I feel are like the handful of the most nutritious foods that you should try to have on a daily basis for the most part. Okay. So this is going to be really fun. I love to talk about food, but before I do, I wanted to really fast, um, just give you a quick thank you to my podcast family. This podcast is doing very well. And I just wanted to thank you for sharing it with your loved ones and on your social media and for leaving such positive reviews. It really, oh, it means the world to me. In fact, uh, you know, I've worked with Beachbody for 14 years and this year, I think it's the first year they're doing it. Um, so I don't know how many times they could have gotten it, <laughs> but I was nominated as one of 10 coaches uh, who have had the most influence on helping people reach their health and fitness goals. Now we're talking about, you know, well over a hundred thousand coaches um, and I'm one of 10. And that, that means more to me than any, you know, rank or income progression or um, anything like that, that, that truly is why I became a coach, uh, which started off, you know, where I am today with, you know, uh, being a nutritionist and having, you know, books out and having now a podcast and all that stuff. It was the catalyst besides being a fitness instructor to really make this a lifelong uh, passion of mine. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here and, uh, allowing me to share my love of all things, health and wellness and being on this journey with me. So let's get started now. Um, these, what I really want to talk about uh, for most of you that um, I assume dabble in intermittent fasting because you do watch, listen to this podcast or watch it. If you're watching it, I'm waving at you right now. <laughs> if not, <laughs> imagine me waving at you. Um, what's really important, obviously, are satiating foods. Satiating foods are really important, not just for, um, you know, so you don't eat so much at the time, but also to keep you fuller longer. And in that process, or it's going to keep you from eating too much on a daily basis, you know, which will eventually add up to, you know, our obesity epidemic. So we want to have very nutritious foods, but we also want to have foods that, that give you that satiety. So you are getting fed very well and you're also feeling full. How amazing is that? I mean, you can just imagine how good you're going to feel <laughs> because you are satisfied. And you also just put some incredibly nutrient dense foods inside of you to help, you know, combat disease and uh, keep you fighting the aging process and keeping you full of energy and helping you sleep like a champ. So number one on the list are eggs. <laughs> You've been any, any kind of a follower of mine, you know, what a fan I am of eggs. I always have been. And I really love right now, all the research that is coming out about how eggs can actually be heart healthy <laughs> because for the longest time, and some of you may still feel that eggs, the cholesterol in eggs uh, actually uh, is not good for your heart. And that is simply not true. Now I'm 90% sure of the statistic, um, but I believe mother's breast milk is 55% cholesterol. It's got a lot of cholesterol in it. We need it. And as I hope you know now that if you don't eat cholesterol, your body will make it because it does need a certain amount of it. Cholesterol is very important for your hormones. So it's not a bad thing. And eggs are so complete and so nutrient dense. And not only that, but um, in a 2008 study, if someone ate an egg over a bagel, 
uh, they were less hungry and they ate less throughout the day. And the reason for that is that eggs actually help stimulate a hormone called PYY, which is a satiety hormone. So man, I'm here to tell you, if you're just having straight oatmeal or, you know, some toast or a bagel or some fruit or cereal <laughs> for breakfast, um, I really want to encourage you just for a little while to swap that out for a couple of eggs, make yourself a veggie omelet for a week and just see how you feel. Just try it for one week and then report back to me, please. <laughs> so eggs are something that I have every single day. I have for mm, a really long time and I actually have blood work scheduled next month, which I will always share with you guys. And part of that is cholesterol. My cholesterol is always healthy, but I always get it tested here and there to kind of prove uh, to you guys that uh, what I preach um, is the truth and it really works. Uh, and I'm sure my cholesterol will come back super healthy, even though I have eggs twice a day, probably almost every day. You know, eggs are really easy to find when you travel as well. There's no place that you can't go that you can't get two eggs. <laughs> So it's just really easy to keep yourself on track as well, whether you're at home or traveling, you can hard boil eggs, you can make little tiny, you know, egg cups, you can uh, scramble them in a matter of five minutes, they're just so complete and so easy and so good for you. Uh, the next one, let's talk about cruciferous vegetables. Man, in a perfect world, I would have every single, and I don't even do this. Shut up, Melissa, you don't even do this. But in a perfect world, I would have everybody, including myself, <laughs> have a serving of cru cruciferous vegetables with each meal, talking two or three meals a day, not five or six meals a day, depending on how you eat. But man, they are so stinking good for you, especially us women. So cru fish, delete cruciferous vegetables are very, um, man, they're very nutrient dense and they really do a good job for us with our estrogen levels. So we do have uh, three different kinds of estrogen. One is really good for us and two not so good for us. And cruciferous vegetables, like cauliflower and broccoli and beloved Brussels sprouts are um, so good for helping keep that good estrogen up and, and kind of keeping the ones that are not so good for you at bay. So, you know, whether you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, especially then those cruciferous vegetables are so incredibly healthy for you, but they're also cancer fighting. Why aren't we eating them all the time if they are cancer is a big deal. Do you know anybody that has battled cancer? Have you battled it yourself? It is not something you would want to wish on your absolute worst enemy. And by eating cruciferous, <laughs> just struggling with that word today, cruciferous vegetables, you are fighting cancer. So I think that one is one that you should not only have every day, but if you can squeeze it in more than once a day, uh, that's really going to help you live a very healthy life. You know, they're very high in fiber too, which is going to help you feel satiated, which will aid in weight loss as well. So you will not only look and feel great, but you will just be your healthiest self on the inside. And you'll notice it on the outside with all of those vitamins and minerals. All right. I have a question for you. Do you ever feel tightness in your tummy sitting in rush hour traffic, or you get sick to your stomach right before a big presentation? I've been there. <laughs> That's because your gut, not your brain, is responsible for your stress response. So to manage stress and to feel calm and in control, you have to give your gut what it needs to thrive. Now, personally, I trust Just Thrive Probiotic because it's recommended by some of the biggest names in the health industry. And I've been taking it for years. It's a game changer in helping you sidestep gas, bloat, and constipation. And it's even been shown to help flip the switch on stress so you can feel confident and in control. And for next level stress management, get this, I have been pairing the probiotic with Just Thrive's breakthrough new product called Just Calm. I love the word. <laughs> Just Calm's proprietary ingredients have been clinically proven to do the almost imaginable. It reduces perceived stress. It improves sleep quality and energy, and even encourages better focus and flow. Now, Just Thrive Probiotic and Just Calm make the perfect one-two punch. Can you see me doing the one-two punch to beat stress before it beats you? 
I really want you to find and listen to the episode that I did with Tina Anderson, who is the uh, creator and CEO of Just Thrive and listen to this podcast. It is amazing where she goes into detail and you're going to be able to learn all about this groundbreaking company that's changing the game in the supplement industry. There's no fake marketing, no claims, just real scientifically proven results, which mean everything to me. And I know it does to you too. So if you're looking for the best in gut health and mood support, choose the clinically proven award-winning power of Just Thrive. And guess what? You can save 15% off site-wide when you go to justthrivehealth.com and use the code Melissa Made. Let's talk about avocados. So when I was a kid, I don't know about you. When I was a kid, I hated Brussels sprouts and I hated avocados and I hated coconut. Mm. Weird. <laughs> like, probably three of my favorite things now. <laughs> but bless my mom's heart. I don't know if she listens to my podcast. Um, she used to boil Brussels sprouts, alien heads, and they stunk so bad. And they were so slimy. There was just no way in hell I would ever as an adult eat Brussels sprouts. I'm actually going to post a reel tomorrow about how I cook them. So by the time this comes out, that reel will be out and you can go take a look at it on my Instagram, but I could eat those all day, every day. And Brussels sprouts um, are so good for you. Just like I said, for the cruciferous vegetables, but avocados, um, they're just finding are incredibly nutrient dense. They have a really good type of fat inside of them. And not only that, but they're chocked full of nutrition. So you get the satiety of having uh, the cat, they're, they're pretty calorie dense, uh, you know, not overwhelming, but for fruit slash vegetable, they are on the higher calorie side, but they will keep you fuller longer. In fact, there's a study, um, that I read, uh, in 2013, that if you add a half an avocado to a meal, it helped people stay full for up to five hours compared to people who didn't put the avocado in their meal. So um, imagine having some eggs every morning. Do you see my pictures on Instagram? Eggs every morning, and I will have a quarter to a half an avocado uh, most days. And I'm telling you, you know, if I eat my breakfast at 10 or 11, I am sincerely not full until at least three o'clock. So um, I do believe um, in that. And I will have all the studies that I talk about linked below, but um, it does uh, fill you up, making you feel um, satiated. And it is just one of those foods that have a ton of vegetables, vegetables, vitamins, and minerals inside of them. What is today? Today is Saturday. I have, I didn't have my energize. I'm dead serious. I had my coffee this morning. I didn't have energize. I think that's why I'm struggling because <laughs> I usually drink drink coffee. That's I try to drink either decaf or half calf. Now, side note, you guys know that decaffeinated coffee means that it's gone through a chemical process to pull out the caffeine because coffee beans have caffeine in them. Unlike tea, where you can have your favorite tea. If it says decaffeinated, that means they pulled the caffeine out and it's a chemical process. Um, anything, you know, that's a chemical process. Isn't the best thing in the world for you. Um, but if something says caffeine free, like you, you have a caffeine free tea, like chamomile tea, that means it never had caffeine in it. So there is a difference. So I try to have half calf or decaf coffee here lately. Cause I'm just trying to be a little bit more conscious of my, uh, cause I like a lot of coffee in the morning of my caffeine and I still love my energize, but I didn't work out today. Today's a rest day. And so I didn't have my energize. And I seriously think that's why words are hard today. <laughs> just a side note. <laughs> So let's move on to water. I know you know this, but um, you can get your quote unquote water intake if you have a lot of vegetables and if you eat some, you know, some fruits in the day and you have, you know, tea and stuff like that, you can find your water elsewhere besides straight water, but you need at least some pure, clean, fresh, healthy water on a daily basis. And I recommend at least three times a day, like first thing in the morning, just have a whole bunch of water mid afternoon, have a, you know, a good old glass of water. And then in the evening as well, at least if you feel like you have a pretty healthy diet and you stay pretty hydrated, like I have my peak, my peak, um, detox hydrating drink every day too. And I definitely consider that, you know, it's 16 ounces and I consider that part of my water intake, but if you don't like water, okay. If you're just like, you really struggle to get it in uh, number one, tough love too bad. It is besides oxygen, the most important thing to you living a life to staying alive, 
but consider lemon and lime or even cucumber. Every time I put a slice of just a simple slice of cucumber in my water, it completely changes the way it tastes. It is so refreshing. Um, and plus it's good for you. You know, you're done with your water. You can just eat that little slice of cucumber, but, um, add things to it, you know, just some natural things to it, to give it a little bit of flavor. If you really struggle with that water, but I really want you, uh, today's your day. Okay. You're going to, uh, if you're in the kitchen, listening to this, make yourself a glass of water right now. But if you're driving or busy today's the day from this point on, you're going to work really hard to have three good sized glasses of water, bare minimum, um, and flavored if you need to, uh, but keep in mind, uh, it is probably the most important thing that we're talking about today. So let's move on to probiotics. So you can supplement with probiotics. And I actually definitely um, suggest that only because, um, let's be honest, the foods that we eat are, are very destructive to our guts, um, except for the very healthy foods that we have. But if we have anything else that's not on the, the spectrum of, you know, incredibly nutrient dense, uh, this chances are it could actually wreak havoc on your gut. So take good care of your gut by eating probiotic foods, but also supplementing with probiotics. And then you've just, you're definitely giving your gut the best chance to be healthy. And of course, I'm talking about prebiotics as well. You can eat prebiotics like asparagus, which help feed, and you can also supplement with prebiotics. But um, I really want you to think about those probiotics, uh, kimchi, sauerkraut, fermented pickles, you can get fermented beets, um, uh, certain yogurts are um, great for you and try to get those in every single day. So for me, I love to, I love pickles. I do. I, ever since I was a little kid, I love pickles. So you can find a place that actually ferments them and makes them more of a prebiotic pickle than just, you know, a, a vinegar pickle. Um, pickles, a weird name. Every time I say it, I giggle inside, but, uh, something like that, that you can just snack on here or there or sauerkraut, you know, you can put sauerkraut on anything you can put on vegetables. You can get yourself a nice, um, sausage, you know, of some sort and have that a couple of times a week. You can put the sauerkraut on your eggs in the morning. <laughs> you can eat it straight out of the jar. If you like it, try not to heat it or at least heat it too hot. I mean, if you want to make it room temperature, a little bit warmer, that's okay, but you don't um, want to heat it because that, um, kind of isn't really good for the probiotics in those foods. Okay, let's move on. We've got uh, three more. And the next one is olive oil. So obviously the Mediterranean diet, uh, the blue zone area is very popular and they attribute it a lot to the fact that they have a lot of olive oil. So think of, you know, uh, sauteing your vegetables in olive oil or cooking your meats, you know, the thing that you don't want to do is olive oil needs to be cooked on low heat. So you don't want to put your skillet on high and then put the olive oil in because you're going to, um, you're going to ruin the, the, the nutrition in the olive oil. And so you can like rub it into the meat or something, or like I spritz it into my vegetables before I cook it. Cause it's different if it's kind of part of the food, as opposed to just sitting on that hot skillet for a little while. If you really start to see it smoke, that's usually a bad sign um, that it's, you know, it's smoke point is low <laughs> and you don't want to cook it, but you can use it in salads. Of course, um, you can hide olive oil anywhere, but, um, it is incredibly, incredibly important. And once again, um, it is, uh, very satiating. So there was a study I found in 2013, um, at the university of München. I hope I'm saying that right. München, München. And, um, they took lard, butter fat, grapeseed oil, and olive oil, and did this big study and found that out of all of those uh, fats, that olive oil was the most satiating. And not only that, but I think it is probably the most nutrient dense of those fats. And I think, you know, I do think lard and I do think butter fat, uh, grapeseed oil, not so much lard and butter fat, um, are very healthy too. And they're ones that you can put at a really high smoke point. So if you are going to you know, make yourself try to do a Pittsburgh style steak. Do you guys know what that is? I think 50% of the steakhouses that I go to when I ask it, the steak to be Pittsburgh style, um, they look at me and they say, yes, ma'am. Or they look at me and they're like, I don't know what that is. So uh, comment below maybe and tell me uh, if you, if you know what Pittsburgh style is, it's my favorite way to have a steak, but it does make it charred on the outside. And so the only way to get that char is to get it really high heat. And that's when you want to use something like ghee or lard or something like that, or avocado oil to, or hemp to get it so that it chars without ruining that oil and making it unhealthy for you. Even though honestly, char is not 
the most healthiest for you. <laughs> you know, when you grill, like you grill a steak and, and you char the outside, that's that's considered a carcinogen. Um, and believe it or not, uh, marinating your meat before you do that actually helps keep the carcinogenic effects from your from producing in your meat if you marinate it, especially in something like red wine. Mm, red wine. <laughs> I wish that was on the list. It's not. Can we fake it? I mean, I don't think red wine's bad for you, but I don't know if it's something you should have every day. So I'm saying every day. So you're not going to hear me say grass fed, grass finished beef, because I don't think you should have it every single day. I don't think you should have fish every single day, as healthy as it is for you. Not every day. These foods, you can get away with having them every single day. Uh, the next one is not really a food, but green tea. So green tea is so incredible for you. The quality is, pro and oh, going back to quality, olive oil. Make sure that you get um, olive oil that's in a glass bottle that's dark and you store it and you get small bottles. Uh, it Olive oil goes bad. It can go rancid after, you know, not very long. So if you buy one of those big Costco jugs, which seem like a great deal. By the time you get through that huge jug, it will be rancid. It will have gone bad. So get smaller jugs and um, keep them out of the light, have it in a dark glass bottle and, you know, get the extra virgin olive oil that's um, organic and spend a little bit more because that bottle is going to last you a long time. So spend the $5 more to get the better quality olive oil back to green tea. So it is such a powerful antioxidant for you. Um, Anti-ager EGCG in there um, is a very long word, but um, it has been shown to actually boost your metabolism. Now I did an old podcast on, you know, natural ways to boost your metabolism. And I talked about green tea uh, and the quality is everything, which is why I'm a huge fan of peak life or peak tea. Um, I think they are by far the best quality out there. Um, and if you can get, you know, one, two, even up to three cups of green tea a day, you're going to notice um, a rise in your metabolism. Now it could be, I think I read somewhere that it's up to like 186 calories a day, but that's going to add up. <laughs> Either you can eat that much more in a day, or you can, you know, use that to help cut back your calories a little bit if you're trying to lose a little bit of weight. So not only does it help your metabolism, but it also is good for you. There are so many properties in green tea that are just great. Those, those powerful antioxidants do so much good, kill those free at radicals, which you could you know, attribute to helping you fight the aging process. So green tea, um, aside from water is by far the most important thing that you will drink every single day. And my good friend, Mike Karpenko here lately, and I haven't tried it yet. I need to try it, um, has half coffee and half green tea and he drinks it in the morning. I'm like, I really don't want to mess with my coffee. And he goes, believe it or not, you really can't taste the green tea. And I'm like, really? okay. I mean, cause I drink green tea cause it's good for me. Not because I just savor the flavor. <laughs> You know, I'm not one of those girls to put sugar or cream or anything into coffee or tea. So I, I like to drink it straight for the benefits, but I'm, I'm not sitting there going, mm, this is good. But he said, if you have your coffee and then you have your green tea in there, you can't taste it. And I've been meaning to try it because that's genius, <laughs> genius if it works, because that's one extra serving of green tea that I can get every single day. So the last one I want to talk about are sweet potatoes, and that might surprise you. I think sweet potatoes, potatoes in general, kind of get a bad rap, uh, mostly because, you know, here, just like with everything else, our portions are distorted these days. You know, a real potato probably back in the 60s was the size of the palm of your hand, maybe. And now they're the size of your whole hand. They're huge. And so when it says, you know, a potato, <laughs> people are really having what's considered a two or three serving potato versus one serving. Um, but the, the orange color in sweet potatoes um, is so important for your health. And uh, once again, potatoes have been shown to be very satiating. And if you eat the potato cold, it's um, actually has the benefit of helping your insulin as opposed to eating a hot potato. And, and I'm not going to go into detail about that, but just keep in mind that if uh, it's called a resistant starch, but if you eat potatoes cold, they actually react. Some, there's a chemical reaction that happens when they go from being hot, cooked and hot to being cold that makes them a resistant starch and they become very, very low on the glycemic index and they shouldn't have much of a spike. Um, on your insulin levels. And they're very nutrient dense. 
um, that orange color is so, so important to all of the colors, the rainbow are important. But if you see, I'm looking at my list, you've got the avocado, which is green. You've got the egg, which is yellow. Cruciferous vegetables can be green and they can be white. Um, and sweet potatoes are orange. You're giving yourself that rainbow of colors, which is super, super important. And so don't be afraid to have those sweet potatoes. You, you can cut them up into cubes and you can roast a big old pan of them or put them in the air fryer like I do. And have yourself, think of them like berries, you know, have yourself a quarter cup or half of cup with your breakfast or have them with lunch or with dinner or anything like that, because they are very nutrient packed. They're high in fiber. So they're very satiating. Um, the colors is everything. Um, I really want you guys to concentrate on when you look at your, especially your kids. <laughs> I, I die a little bit inside when I'm anywhere, like even at an airport and I see, you know, a kiddo eating and they've got the brown chicken nuggets and the brown French fries and the yellow macaroni and cheese. And <laughs> there's zero, zero color on their plate. It just kills me a little bit inside. I wasn't a perfect parent. Um, my kids did, we, man, we ate a lot of carbohydrates, a lot of carbohydrates, but we were also, you know, we couldn't afford uh, much more living in Hawaii. But uh, so I wasn't a perfect parent, but you know, when you know better, you do better. Now I know better. And I wish I could go back and feed them a little bit better. Um, and I wish I could help more parents understand how important it is, especially with the rise of ADD, ADHD and autism and all that because of our food. So that's a different rant, but just to sum it up, satiating nutrient dense foods that I think you should have every day, eggs, don't be afraid of the egg. Check out the study, <laughs> cruciferous vegetables, avocados, water, water, water pre and probiotics um, through your food. And you can, that's one of those things that I will never tell you. You don't need to supplement. I think it's always a great idea to supplement uh, just thrive health, which I've mentioned before. I actually had um, the CEO um, on the podcast and she's, she's the coolest lady on the planet. Um, that is a tremendously good probiotic for you and your kids. Okay. Your kids can have it as well. Olive oil, green tea, and sweet potatoes. So I hope you wrote all those down and you're going to make an effort to get as many of those into your diet as you can every single day. And um, I promise you, you're going to feel better. You're going to feel less hungry. You're going to have more energy. Uh, you're going to start to notice it in your skin and your hair and your energy levels and you're sleeping because you're fueling your body uh, very densely. So as always, as always, I hope that you wake up feeling prepared just like today and then go to bed feeling proud. To finish this off, I want to thank you one more time for being a part of this podcast family. It means the world to me, and I will see you guys very soon. Have a great day. Wow, we've reached the end. But before I leave you, I'd love to hear from you. After all, it's not every day that someone reaches out and asks for your opinion. And to me, your opinion does matter. So please share this episode with anyone that you think needs to hear this message. And remember to rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. My name is Melissa McAllister, and until next time, thank you for being your own health advocate.